What was that? I don't know. It's an ingredient. On this episode of Doing the Most, we're making Ecto Cooler. Homemade brews and various artists, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. We're going to use some unconventional ingredients for our grown up version of Ecto Cooler. So, here are the ingredients for our Ecto Cooler homebrew. In primary, six pounds of honey water to 4.25 gallons, and 8 grams of Fermaid O thrown in right at the beginning. In secondary, after stabilizing, add 5 cans of orange juice concentrate, the juice from 3.5 pounds of tangerines or mandarin oranges, and 2 pounds of honey to back sweeten. Depending on your taste buds, you may want to add as few as 3 cans of orange juice concentrate. The original drink is not very orangey, so the less orange you add, the more it will taste like the original Ecto Cooler. However, for a grown-up palate, you may want a little bit more citrus flavor. We'll start off by scooping in 6 pounds of orange blossom honey. Now I know that my bucket here weighs about 2.2 pounds, so I'm actually going to weigh this out until the bucket in total weighs about 8.2 pounds, and that way I know I've hit about 6 pounds of honey. The goal for this beverage is to hit at around 6% alcohol in the final product. 6 pounds of honey across a 5 gallon batch should get us there. I'm not being too particular about ABV on this one though. Once our honey's in, we'll add our filtered water, and we're adding water up to 4.25 gallons, and that leaves us some extra room for the juices and honey later. We're adding EC1118 yeast, which is a relatively hearty yeast, but I used it here because it was the champagne yeast that I had on hand at that time. Then we're front loading with 8 grams of Fermade O for nutrient. Something this low in ABV, you could easily front load with a nutrient like diammonium phosphate about 24 hours after yeast pitch if you don't happen to have Fermade O on hand. And stir, stir, stir. Checking our gravity, it clocks in at just under 1.05. And then we set that to ride for uh, about a week, week and a half. Once that ferments all the way out, which it should, it should get down all the way to 1.000 on your hydrometer, it smells like mead. Very carbon dioxide rich mead. So we're gonna rack this off into a secondary container and get it stabilized. We are using potassium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate to stabilize this, and we're just doing that by the package instructions so we get the right amount. And we're doing that because we are adding a ton of fermentable sugar back to this to get it up to the cloying sweetness of the original Ecto Cooler. Stabilizing now will help ward off re-fermentation later. 48 hours after stabilizing, it's time to crush up your tangerines or mandarins. I'm using mandarins here because they were easily accessible. The original Ecto Cooler was a tangerine orange drink, but tangerines weren't available at my grocery store. Mandarins work just fine. What you're looking for is that fresh pop of citrus to add in here along with the canned orange juice concentrate. I'm using a couple of different apparati here to juice these oranges. Both of these are antiques and work okay enough for this application. The goal is just to mush out as much juice as possible from that fruit. And then that juice goes directly into your stabilized brew as well as your five cans of orange juice concentrate. If you want this to mimic the original Ecto Cooler a little bit closer, you might omit a couple of cans of orange juice concentrate. They do give it a really orangey flavor, which is really nice, but the original Ecto Cooler, as I said, was basically just sugar juice. And you'll see that in our tasting. 
Once all that's in, we're gonna add two pounds of wildflower honey to back sweeten. And you can probably tell there is a ton of sugar going in here to back sweeten this, a ton. You may want to adjust based on your preferences. Now I wanna take a pause here and talk through some of the science of what we're doing. As you may have noticed, we have not yet added anything to clarify this. In previous test batches, we went all in on the doing the most process in order to attempt to lock in a pectin haze as well as a protein haze. Protein and pectin hazes can both be locked in with some high temperatures. So I chose in one recipe test to actually boil the orange juice concentrate, the tangerines, and some oats because oats are a high protein grain. This created a sickeningly thick slurry that was then added in secondary. I mean, it looked like straight up tangerine porridge. And it worked fine and it added the flavors that I wanted and it definitely contributed to a really nice haze. The original Ecto Cooler drink is a hazy product and I wanted this to be just as hazy as the original. However, in my testing, I found that adding heat is not really necessary. There's some kind of processing that happens to that canned orange juice that contributes a haze. It's happened in these test batches. It's happened in my creamsicle test batches. So I'm not really worried about going overboard and locking in a haze with this recipe because it seems to haze up naturally on its own. However, we do want to be careful about finding it. And so in my recipe tests, I was finding with gelatin. You let the gelatin bloom in a few tablespoons of water for 30 minutes, microwave it for a minute, stir, 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 and add it to the carboy. Gelatin will not remove pectin haze, and gelatin will not remove protein haze as long as the brew is at room temperature. Because protein haze typically manifests when a beverage is cool, which is why some call it chill haze. This recipe does not have any sort of protein haze added to it. It only has pectin haze. And so to find this, we are going to find it with gelatin, just like we did in our testing, and we're not gonna find it with anything else. So this will help compact all of the pulpy bits into a firm-ish cake at the bottom, but it will leave pectin in suspension so the brew stays hazy. That way we don't have little bits and bobs floating in it, but we do have a nice, hazy, mostly opaque drink. And that's gonna take some time, about a week, week and a half to firm up. And be prepared, you're gonna be leaving about a gallon worth of stuff in the bottom of your carboy. So consider this a four gallon batch. Originally, we also really wanted to do a natural coloring on this. And we tried everything from spirulina to wheatgrass. And what we found is that plant-based dyes or plant-based particulate that adds color tends to drop out of suspension. And so we bottled one bottle with wheatgrass so you can see how that works. It's about an eighth of a teaspoon of wheatgrass per bottle to get the right color, but we ended up just having to go with food coloring. In racking this, we put a piece of sanitized cheesecloth inside of our racking cane in order to do a little bit of filtering just in case there's any pulp left in there. And this may clog up once or twice as you're racking. You may have to pop it out and put a new piece in and restart your siphon. And you can see just how much was left behind there in that secondary vessel. There's a lot of pulp in those canned orange juice concentrates. And now's the time to add our dye. So we're gonna dye this right before packaging it. Ours is gonna go in a keg, but you could bottle it after this. But we're dyeing it in this container so we can see the color before it gets packaged. And color matching on this was kind of tricky because who the heck actually remembers what Ecto Cooler looked like? I mean, there are pictures on the web, but seeing it in person is really the only way to do it justice. So in trying to match this, it only makes sense to open a three-year-old Ecto Cooler for ourselves and match it directly to the original product. And you know we're gonna be tasting that. We have to taste that. So Ecto Cooler goes into a glass and for those of you out there playing along at home, I did some color matching on the web and Pantone 582C is about the right color you're going for. So add a little bit more food dye and check it against our glass. And this ended up being a dozen or so drops of green and one drop of yellow in order to get it where we were going. And that my friends looks pretty good. Here's the uh, glass of Ecto Cooler. You can see sort of, but there is pulp definitely suspended in there. Ours does not have the pulp. A little taste test here just to see how close this recipe got. It is about the same level of sweetness as the original Ecto Cooler. However, it does have quite a bit more orange flavor backing it up. And honestly, I think I prefer our version. <laughs> So now that it's got our beautiful green color, we get that racked into a keg, and we're not gonna carbonate this. Ecto Cooler wasn't carbonated, but 
This is the easiest way for me to bottle it for friends throughout the next month. My friends are really learning how to make use of swing top bottles. So hit that with a little pressure for storage, and then we will bring over my equally nostalgic friend, Nicole, for a tasting. Nicole is my nostalgia friend. Oh yes. It seems like we basically consumed all the same media growing up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel Probably, like. Probably, yeah, most. Including Ghostbusters. And so I invited you over because it felt like you were my closest friend who would appreciate the experience of trying grown-up homebrew Ecto Cooler. Yes, yeah. for sure. I have here some Ecto Cooler from 2017's re-release that I spent far too much on eBay for. No, I told you it's worth it. It's, <laughs> this is for the culture of nostalgia. So we're going to open this up. I found this to be incredibly sweet. Give it a try. It's not. It's also not the green that I remember it. No, I thought it was a lot lighter, <laughs> or spookier, or less brown. Less brown. Sure. Are we yeah. cheers yeah, into it? Yeah. Cheers. The smell hit me before. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that. Very, very, very faint orange. Yeah. Very faint citrus. Yeah. But then I don't know what it is. It's just like. There's almost not even acid in there. No. No. You expect it to bite a little. Nothing. Bit. Nothing like that. No. Nah. So the the version that's in the keg we colored with food dye. But, for the fans, I wanted to make sure that they had an opportunity to do some sort of naturally dyed version. And the best thing that we tried ended up being wheatgrass. Oh, uh, yes. In order to suspend the color, you really need to shake well it's like a, before serving. It's like a party glass. You gotta... Something like that. Not terribly different. No. It's got a little bit of a browner look to it, and that seems to be as the as the wheatgrass sits in it, over time, weeks, months, it gets browner and browner and browner. Yeah. I am so <clears throat> excited to hear what you think of my version of Ecto Cooler. We have it on tap here at the Doing the Most household. Yes. It is much more citrus. Mm -hmm. And that's nice. Yeah. It's backed up by like quite a bit of honey to back sweeten it. Yes. It's much sweeter than I would typically make any of the, the products that I that I brew here. Well, and so I like sweet. Okay. So I'm like, this is okay. Compared to some of your other stuff, I would say this is, this is quite sweet, mm -hmm. but I like it. I could drink this like on a, outside on the porch. There's more orange, which gives it more of a grown up feel. Uh -huh. It's not heavy. The fermentation is nice. It, mm -hmm. it lets me know that I'm going to get where I want to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to take me there, but I'm not I'm not going to be disappointed. I think if folks wanted to make it taste a little bit more like the original, you would use less orange. Mm -hmm. but, okay, wait. I got him. Going back. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh no, they're mm -hmm. they're quite similar, but this is very again orange grown up. Yeah, yeah. They're living in the same space. Mm -hmm. The adult version is more catered to our grown-up palettes. As it should be. It's more complex. Yes. It's orangier. It's got a little bit more of that acid and that, mm -hmm. that tannic kind of astringent bite. Yeah. Without just like <laughs> sticking your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Definitely. It is quite light. Well, thank you, Nicole, for coming over, my nostalgia friend, to try. You, you, you see... You can't see below the camera, but there are other Ecto Cooler experiments still sitting over here. This was this went through <laughs> quite a bit of trial to get to where we're at with it. It's a, and, it's a and, journey. And yeah, and I'm I'm happy with it. Me too. I, I, I'm going to attempt to give away as many bottles of this in preparation for Halloween as I can. And I will gladly fall on the sword. <laughs> I am fine with that. Really. Thank you so much for watching. If you love content like this, please consider supporting the channel. You can become a YouTube member for just $4.99 a month. Just click join below this video. Details are also in the description. And you can hit us up on Instagram or Pinterest at doing the most okay. And our website is doingthemost.org. I hope you all enjoyed the video. You should have plenty of time from the release of this video to get this brewed before Halloween. And if you do, jump back here in a comment. Let me know how it went for you. Happy brewing and stay safe.